Hi, welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Today, I'm here actually to analyze the third week of October in mundane perspective and also for each individual science. Uh, we do have around six aspects that we need to analyze. And let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. And I'm going to finish with October 24th, then the sun going to trine Saturn. Um, I'm doing all sign and I'm doing tropical astrology. So if you would like to um, subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate that. And if you like and comment below and share it with your loved ones, share it with your friends, with your family, so they can also actually benefit from my readings. So let's see what kind of aspect we having in the third week of October. I have that little wheel right in front of me, and that's how I'm going to analyze the aspects, and that's how I'm going to analyze each individual signs. So what we have, we do have a uh, sun opposition with North Node in Aries, the North Node, and the sun is in Libra on the 18th of October. So each individual aspect I'm going to try to analyze uh, on a global perspective, what kind of global impact it has, what kind of weather related, finance related, health and education related, and also for politics as well. So, you know, uh, the sun is representing the, the, your, your inner fire and representing the work what you do. So let's see, North Node is your purpose. So on the global uh, sphere, on global impact, it is possible diplomatic tension as uh, some countries going to reassess their alliances. And I said that before in my previous videos as well. Leadership crisis may arise. Why? Because the sun is representing the king, it's representing the leaders. And we will have the eclipse, the Taurus eclipse. Um, and that's going to be the last cycle of the Taurus eclipse for another 18 and a half years. And it's going to take down multiple people, multiple leaders who has either Scorpio or Taurus sons or ascendant. And I'm going to talk about that in my other videos. Weather related, you know, it could be some kind of sudden climate change or some kind of disruption with weather. Uh, the sun is fiery energy, so we might going to experience some more fire somewhere. Economy. Market may see fluctuations and the investors going to actually reassess the risk and, uh, you know, how they're going to invest. And health and education-wise, uh, we're going to focus actually on education and health, and it's going to be a different priority right now. They're going to try to balance out the, the public health and also more emphasis on the education system as well. In general, politics and finances, you know, when those two is opposing each other, that's some kind of challenge, that's some kind of tension. So there could be some kind of unpopular decision, but going to actually outrage the public and it could lead to protest and social unrest, unfortunately. All right, on the same day, Mercury as well going to oppose the North Node. Mercury is the planet of sales, communication, so the global impact over here, it could be some kind of miscommunication, some kind of lies. And actually, it could have an impact or it could, it may lead to military miscalculation as well. Weather uh, aspect could be some kind of uh, effect uh, like, like tornadoes or big, big winds, which is affecting the telecommunication, affecting internet or, you know, some something could happen with the with the pose what is that uh, with the the phone um, post as well and you know like that could affect the communication and um, the way we can interact with each others 
on uh, the same things economically could be some kind of volatile um, issues with stock market, for example. Um, it could also impact the currencies as well. So it could decrease some kind of currencies. Health and education-wise, it could uh, lead to, to misinformation and it could create some kind of fear as well. Uh, there could be some kind of new policy which is affecting education, which is not going to be taken either seriously or it's not going to uh, well, be well received by the student in education or by the teachers. Politics and finances over here, you know, there could be some kind of scandals that could leak out and, and uh, gossip is what is leaking out. All right, so the next day, actually two days later, we're going to have a Mercury Kazemi. So Mercury Kazemi is when Mercury is in the heart of the sun. The combust is not necessarily good because the sun is very powerful, the energy of the sun and it's burning every single planet when it's in the heart. But for example, the Kazemi, that very short period, it is really, really important and really auspicious. So the Kazemi is happening on the 20th in Libra. So that could be some kind of amazing diplomatic uh, forefront coming um, um, and, you know, like, some kind of res resolution uh, between countries, so globally. Uh, as I said before, it could be some kind of new alliances for countries. And uh, weather-wise, it could be just like uh, their kind of new technology coming up, which is going to be very effective and it can measure, you know, like, like it will be so advanced, so it will help to to announce some kind of weather impact uh, weeks before and people could get ready and could escape actually natural disaster. So it could um, relate to that. And then uh, what else could be? So finance and, and finances over here, you know, this is a Kazemi. So this one, it could really affect positively the market because of some kind of diplomatic news. So it could be like, all right, you know, whatever happening between Israel and Palestine and uh, uh, Ukraine and, um, and uh, Russia and Taiwan and China, some kind of news which is actually going to uh, affect the stock market positively. Health and education-wise, it could be great for pharmaceuticals and educational reforms. Uh, for example, before when I said the sun opposing North Node, it could have created something like uh, out of stock. Pharmaceuticals could be out of stock, but right now they're going to try to, to, to actually solve this situation with that kind of Kazemi two, three days later. And politic-wise, uh, you know, it also representing leaks. And, uh, you know, like like definitely we're going to have a few days over here, which get, we're going to have a lot of scandals. All right. And then the same day, we do have uh, Pluto square Mercury. Pluto is the planet of transformation, taboos, shared resources, ruled by Hades, right? Rules the underworld. Mercury is the fastest planet, um, like obviously that is moon the fastest, but uh, but uh, but Mercury right after that, and and you know, um, Mercury is communication, something to do with purchases, with sales, um, and and also education, skill based studies as well, and short distance traveling. It rules two signs, it rules uh, Virgo, and it also rules Gemini. All right, so this uh, square going to have an intense impact on, on the world, because globally, we're going to actually have some kind of intense negotiation. And um, 
but you know it it could be something with uh, peace or you know who we actually going to approach this kind of war situation who going to take whose side so that is the negotiation here with pluto mercury square this is challenging however the weather all right so let's see what kind of uh, weather effect could be uh, impacted by this pluto and mercury square so some kind of critical infrastructure and severe weather events could occur, unfortunately. Economically, you know, that is um, some kind of tendency actually with uh, the stock market could be affected. The, actually, the sales and the buying could be affected by this Pluto square Mercury. For example, it could affect vehicles or it could affect part of vehicles and it could also affect mining as well. What other situation gonna happen here? Okay, all right. I'm going to show the sky for you and you will understand what is going on uh, right now. The other thing is the also Pluto going to square uh, the sun as well right the next day on the 21st uh, right because uh, the sun is following mercury and the pluto is in capricorn and pluto went direct on the 10th so it is like some kind of struggles uh, with the nations and also it could be uh, some kind of issues with natural disasters like more earthquake and Pluto is, you know, like eruption, volcano eruption, but Pluto is really the underworld and shaking the underworld. So I know Slovakia, Afghanistan had earthquake right before Turkey. And, you know, like, like it's going to actually get magnified, unfortunately. So definitely there is an impact and we're going to hear more about earthquake as well. Economically, you know, it's possible economic downturns. Why? Because of this is a square. This is some kind of uh, an auspicious aspect over here. Um, like it is, the square is Martian in archetype. So it is urging you to change, urging you to make uh, transformation. So we have to be careful not to do a big step uh, or something, you know, a major um, decision if we are not ready for the change. And politically, it could be because of this is the sun, this is the king, this is leadership, Pluto is death. We might going to learn some leaders are actually get executed or, or, or died or, you know, things like that. And especially people who are ruled by Pluto. And I'm going to tell you who is ruled by Pluto or actually the opposite sign as well, Taurus also impacted. So anybody, Charles, King Charles has a Plutonian energy, Putin has a Plutonian energy because his ascendant is, is Scorpio. And then um, Biden, Biden definitely, I, I think he's, he's, he, he will die within three months. And then I also see something with Zuckerberg because Zuckerberg has a Taurus uh, sun and it's also going to affect his health as well. So anyone who has Taurian and Scorpioian energy, and as we know, Israel has Taurus sun as well, and Pluto sun square over here could impact Israel as well. Any nations who has Plutonian or, or Taurian energy. All right. So, yes. And, you know, that is like some kind of crisis, because when the politician dies, then there, there is going to be perhaps some kind of social unless there. So then finally, we have an amazing aspect, and that is the two amazing benefic, that is Venus, the planet of attraction and currency and luxury and comfort and love, going to try Jupiter. Jupiter is the richest. Jupiter is Santa Claus. Jupiter is blessing in our life. So that's going to be actually amazing for each of us. Uh, and I'm waiting for that for a long time. So globally, it's going to, to increase the value of currency, perhaps. So this is really auspicious. And it is good for international relations. Why? Because Jupiter was Sagittarius. 
which is international relations, export, import, business. And because it could be some kind of peace negotiation somehow. So I hope for this. Uh, better related, it's it's good for agriculture because of Jupiter is in Taurus, you know, and Venus rules Taurus, one of the signs. Taurus is agriculture, so it could be some kind of uh, great investment in agriculture or some kind of favorable weather, which is helping uh, the farmers. Yes. Um, you know, uh, also it could be something like like the sugar um, stock gonna go up, anything to do with Venetian energy, anything to do with art, anything to do with gemstones, and the stock of those could go up. All right, so economically, the farm, uh, the, the financial market could be uh, actually um, have an increase and it could affect the financial market positively. So some currency is going to go up, some value, some, yeah, some currencies might go up. And actually that could be also Venus ruled because it's Venus, Jupiter and Jupiter ruled countries. Uh, currency could actually get increased. All right, so health and education, because of uh, uh, Jupiter is high education, so there could be uh, some kind of educational reform um, announced, and it is very beneficial for the public. It's beneficial, and it's for the greater good. And it could be something in advanced medicine as well, so I love that aspect here. And politically, you know, it could be some kind of financial win for, for some kind of huge companies as well. So this is good, and also for politicians. So as I said, the previous aspect is bad, and some kind of king or leader gonna die. But with that death, whoever rises politically going to be really auspicious, very beneficial for the nation, that it's gonna happen. So I like that aspect. All right. So then let's see. Uh, Mercury ingress Scorpio on the twenty second. So what does it mean? Mercury in Scorpio, you know, Scorpio rules the eighth house, it rules shed resources, it rules death, it rules pregnancies, intimacy, anything to do with taboos, right? Uh, okay, so Mercury is communication, Mercury, so it definitely it's some kind of secretive communication uh, could happen, some kind of uh, you know, secret operation, FBI or, or CIA or, or, you know, negotiation with other countries, secret agencies, that kind of situation might um, uh, happen or might come to light. And then weather related, you know, like uh, Mercury is wind and Scorpio is water. So it could be like water sprouts, late hurricanes. It could be late hurricanes as well. Uh, you know, or some kind of risk of flooding as well. It it could appear. Economically, there is some kind of investigation with fraud. So Scorpio is banks. And, you know, a lot of bank previously uh, closed or people couldn't actually uh, get their money out from the bank. And that's what it's going to happen. They're going to actually investigate the bank uh, banks and, you know, like, uh, for example, cryptocurrency, where the cryptocurrency disappeared, it could happen uh, during this Mercury ingress Scorpio, why Mercury is in Scorpio. Economically, it could initiate some kind of financial fraud. So, you know, like it could be something Scorpio is really hidden, it's banks, you know, like the transfers are disappearing. Um, so... Most of the time, I don't do any transfer if I don't have to during this time. All right, what else is going to happen? Um, you know, this could be like health and education, like um, the education system needs some funding, but somehow it's going to be restricted or, you know, they need more bureaucratic work, need more paperwork to, to submit if if it's going to be for education and health, you know, like those kind of situations, or they're going to investigate um, for, uh, you know, health, whatever happened during COVID or with the COVID vaccines, and it's going to surface, and it's going to come out all the secret around COVID and COVID vaccines. 
politically, you know, Scorpio. Scorpio is is um, have no really integrity or or um, this is an underworld. So it could be like some kind of eruption of some scandals as well. Or, you know, it could affect the stock market, but it is affecting the stock market with the sale and buying. So they're going to be out of stock and they are not capable to purchase some kind of stock. Um, that could happen. All right. So i going to go right now and I'm going to analyze each individual signs for you over here. So areas. You know, that's going to actually uh, health-wise for you, tendency to rush and may lead to minor accidents actually for you. So be careful, especially around the 18th. Uh, Wealth-wise, good financial news around the 22nd, possibly some kind of windfall for you. So I really like that aspect. Career-wise, there is some kind of uh, tension at the workspace on the 20th and the 21st. You need to be really diplomatic and, and really, really need to use um, words that is beautifully polished as well. All right, family and, uh, you know, family-wise, real estate-wise. Uh, there could be some kind of struggle with family and family member. So you just have to keep calm and try not to engage, not to feed into fights with your family members. Just for a bite. That is just a short term, right? And love-wise, the 22nd, Jupiter and Venus, this is great for you, actually, for deepening your relationship, to get romantic and, and you know, to, to have some romance and, and actually get some kind of intimacy there. Uh, all right, so let's see what else is happening. And I'm going to go to Taurus right now. So if you have Taurus rising sun and moon, that's what's going to happen the third week of October for you. Health-wise, you will need to be cautious about your diet, Taurus, all right? So Venus is there, Venus rules you, you love to eat, you know, and there could be some kind of stress indicated uh, on the 21st, and that's why you can comport yourself with food so careful because you can get an upset stomach. Wealth-wise, there is some kind of financial stability coming into your life, but you definitely have to avoid big investment. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Careful there a little bit. Career-wise, you know, some kind of advancement is possible. Some kind of, um, like career-wise, you are capable to get some kind of promotion, especially on the 22nd when Venus and Jupiter trine. So that could be really good for you. Family-wise, there could be some kind of reconnection. You know, you just have to, to avoid topics which is taboo in your family. So be careful a little bit, but definitely there is reconnection, people coming back to your life. And love-wise, there is actually a possibility to, to strengthen your relationship, your existing relationship. Um, so that is also good. All right. Thank you so much for listening. All right, Gemini, rising sun and moon. Let's see what's going to happen for you. I have to go and turn this wheel. So health-wise, you need to watch out actually with respiratory issues. Uh, and, you know, like not to get a cold right now. Autumn is coming and it's getting cold. And, you know, there is an aspect actually which could indicate we're going to have more flu or more COVID or an other uh, virus uh, but I'm going to talk about that later in another video. So that is a possibility. A new restriction, definitely. So wealth-wise, there is some kind of fluctuation for you here. But, um, you know, your income could actually increase and then decrease after that. But, you know, you're going to be capable to stabilize after the 18th, actually after the 22nd. Uh, Career-wise, that is really good time for you to networking. Use social media, use your connection, use your words, um, and and try to connect with people. Family-wise, um, there could be some kind of miscommunication, so you will need to avoid heavy 
topics, not to get involved and free to with their anger, uh, not to talk about politics, not to talk about wars, not to talk about, you know, yeah. But lately everybody get defensive. All right, let's see what about with your love life. So there could be some kind of misunderstanding in your love life. So you need to be really open in your communication and you need to be radically honest as well. Thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. All right, cancers. Let's see if you have a cancer rising, sun and moon, the third week of October going to look like for you. Okay, so health-wise, and then I forget to turn my little wheel over here. So health-wise, you're going to have some kind of, you know, rocky emotional uh, well-being, your feelings going to be ups and downs. So you can actually consider some kind of mindfulness technique over here, meditate. And I really like the meditation of Jose Silva and Lois Hay. I, I do it every single day. So you might want to consider that cancer. And wealth-wise, then could be some kind of unexpected, expensive coming into you. So you have to budget right now. And the other thing that is happening in your career, you're going to have new opportunities, some promotion. And it could be on the 22nd or around the 22nd. You know, promotion or bonus paid out for you. So this is a really, really good aspect. Uh, Family-wise, family wise, you're going to have to have some kind of heated conversation with your family members. Uh, you have to... Um, you know, like put boundaries between family members as well. And love-wise for you, there is some kind of amazing true value in your relationship, but you have to make sure those values are still uh, highly appreciated. So when you are talking to your partner, you will have to talk about your values in the relationship. Thank you so much for listening, Cancers. All right. Let's see, Leo rising, sun and moon. Okay, what's going to happen the third week of October for you? So, health wise, there is, you know, like uh, some kind of major activity going on. You feel you feel like you have a lot of energy. Uh, you, you want to work out, but you need to be cautious because you can hurt yourself. Health wise, you can have actually a great investment in the 22nd and actually you are here to invest something with export, import or in education as well. So it could be amazing for you. Career-wise, well, there you can get promotion, you can get um, something with, you can be actually in the spotlight. So this could be really good for you. You two being, um, you can have a lot of followers overnight. So this is auspicious and family wise this is really good for bonding to to be with your family to take uh, uh, have time with your family and and start to reconnect again and love wise the romantic energy is really really high especially around the 22nd and uh, 23rd so it is good for romance it's good to have a new person in or actually even if you are um uh, already engaged, or uh, if you are uh, uh, in love, it will be amazing to, um, oh, what am I doing here? To have someone, uh, a romantic relationship with, romance with. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Virgos, all right, Virgos, let's see what kind of uh, aspect you will have in October. So you, health-wise, you could have some kind of digestive issues. Uh, you have to watch for your diet, definitely. Wealth-wise, on the 21st, you need to be a little bit cautious with your investment. Mm, you know, anyway, I, I'm not afraid of that because, you know, knowing Virgos, you can be very, very uh, cautious. So, But, you know, like, definitely don't put your eggs in one basket or don't try something new. 
only if you already learned about that or if you knew that kind of investment opportunity. Career-wise, well, there is opportunity for growth. It's opportunity to become a CEO. It's, it's, it's a good, good aspect for you here. Family-wise, you know, like you definitely have to set boundaries. Your children can rebel or your wife or your husband. And you may, you may feel like you don't have enough space and they overtake. So put boundaries. And love-wise, love-wise, there is like, if you are looking for partner, you know, it could be time to reassess your values. What kind of qualities do you see or love in a potential lover? Thank you so much for listening. All right, let's see Libras, 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 Libras. You just had an eclipse in your sign on the 14th, but we're going to start with the 18th. So let's see how. So there is a lot of emotional ups and downs for you. And, you know, right now, self-care is really crucial for you. So take time to have a massage, go to the spa, or, you know, meditate or, or do a capoeira. Any kind of, um, kind of self-care is really, really important during this time. Wealth-wise. All right. Okay, let's see what thing is happening over here. So on the... 21st, that could be some kind of uh, financial advice, which is going to help you to increase your investment, or at least, you know, to, to learn about some kind of new investment, which could be very profitable later on. Career-wise, this could be an intensive period for you, and it actually says your hard work is paying off right now, so this is really pleasant. Family-wise, so there is a lot of conversation and you need to stay grounded because the conversations are emotional for you. You're not liking the boundaries or the family is not liking the boundaries you put up and uh, you are rebelling against it. Uh, Love-wise, you know, it could be actually intimately, really, really intense, sexually, very intense energy for you because Jupiter is in your fifth house and uh, Jupiter is trining Venus. So that could be really good for, for new lovers or, you know, sexuality. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and I'm going to go to Scorpios. All right. Scorpios. Let's see what's going to happen here for you. Okay, so health wise, let's see what's happening. You know, balance, balance, balance. Avoid extremes. Avoid extremes in diet and exercise. Wealth wise, there is some kind of solid financial, uh, uh, you know, like uh, in planning going on in here and you have to avoid impulsive uh, spending uh, career wise uh, you could be actually like learn some kind of skill based career right now and it could be like you can get some kind of licenses if you didn't happen to have it because you couldn't actually do the exams right now this is time for you to do so and, uh, you know, emotionally and love-wise, there it could be some kind of romantic, new romantic interest, and it could be intense sexually as well for you. All right, let's see what's happening. Um, and, you know, family-wise, I forgot to say that, uh, that could be like some kind of outstanding family issue you can actually resolve finally. All right, Scorpio, thank you so much for listening. Okay, Sagittarius rising, sun and moon, third week of October. Health wise, there is going to be a lot of physical activity, which is going to be really, really beneficial for you. Go outside, gardening, you know, uh, and 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 do anything what is it that is really making your aggravation taking it away and your anger, and then wealth wise. This could be some kind of possible gain, actually. Um, or you're going to get a new job, or you're going to get a, an opportunity, a promotion, because Jupiter and Venus between your sixth house and your 
your tenth house going to trine, it could be also really good for your hair. So, for example, you're going to have a spontaneous healing or some kind of healing going to occur. You have money to invest in your career. So this could be really good. This is, I'm a Sagittarius rising, so I'm really happy for that here. Um, Career-wise, there is definitely many new projects are favored. And this is very good for your creative energy as well. Family-wise, it's really good time to travel right now. Uh, and do some kind of family activities with your kids. And love-wise, you know, this is uh, could be some kind of flirtatious energy, not necessarily long time, but but it could be some kind of flirting coming in for you. All right, thank you so much, Sagittarius. Let's see. Capricorn rising, sun and moon. Let's see what's going to happen for you in October, third week of October. All right, health-wise. You know, Capricorns, your stress level going to peak actually around the 18th, between 18 and the 21st. So you have to consider some kind of stress management, meditation, meditation, yoga, martial art would be really amazing for you. That wise, there could be some kind of challenging time. So you need to keep budgeting. You need to check your budget here. In the third week of October, career-wise, could be some kind of pressure. So the teamwork is the key. You have to ask for help. So that's very, very important in the third week of October. Family-wise, there is some kind of heavy responsibility for you this third week. But, you know, as I said, also family-wise, just ask for help. You know, ask your children to help you to clean and, you know, relax. That's very, very important. And love-wise, you know, that could be like amazing time right now to reassess your relationship and, you know, what's your goals and what's your values in your love life, in your, in your relationship. Okay, Capricorn, thank you so much. Aquarius rising sun and moon. Let's see what's going on for you the third week of October. All right, so health-wise, mental health, very, very important. Focus, focus on mindfulness, focus on, on, on self-retreat and, and retreat and the way you actually approach anything in life. Uh, let go of things that you cannot control, which is out of your control. Uh, Wealth-wise, you know, that could be some kind of sudden gains coming to your uh, way, but also could be some kind of losses as well. So it could be very volatile for you. So be careful with your investment. All right, career-wise, there is some kind of innovation. You will be rewarded. You will be actually honored. And it could be some kind of time for brainstorming, some kind of new ideas. And uh, you can create something with technology. So it could be really good for, for innovation right now. Let's see what else is happening family-wise. You have to uh, have and favor some kind of open communication, radical honesty, be open. Answer your children openly about taboos as well. All right, and then let's see your love life. You know, your love life could be a little bit unconventional, but, but you know, spicy and exciting right now. Some new relationship can come into your life. So that could be good, good if you are looking for. Okay, thank you so much for, your, for listening, Aquarius. Let's see. My beautiful spiritual Pisces over here, what's going to happen for you the third week of October? Okay, me being a Pisces sun. So your intuition is out of bond. It is like, all right, you have to listen to your body. You have to listen to your dreams, vivid dreams, very high intuition, prophetic dreams, right? Beth. You do have to avoid risky investment right now, especially around the 21st. So, you know, just, just make sure you are not signing contract, whatever, you know, you are not familiar with or you don't invest in something you are not familiar with. Uh, then your career, let's see what's happening with your career over here. So 
your creativity is really, really in a high peak right now. You can have some kind of artistic pursuit. So this is great time to write. It's great time to create jewelries. It's great time to, to, to create any kind of art, uh, lyrics, you know, writing, singing, dancing. It is really beneficial for you. And let's see your family. There is a deep emotional connection between you and your family. Uh, but you also have some kind of past issues that you must, actually resort otherwise cannot move forward so this is a must uh, um, to do thing so definitely there is something what you need to resolve and then we're going to go to your love life uh, so there is really really high romantic energy over here but being Pisces it's not necessarily intimate it's more like soul connection it is almost like like a deep, deep spiritual lover connection between you and someone else. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. That was the third week of October. As yes, again, if you love my videos, then um, um, share it and comment below, please. And there is my website, urbanwitch.org. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye for now.